Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about app developers versus game developers. <laughs> Okay, let me start off today by saying thank you to everyone who showed up to last Friday night's live stream. We had about 32 people show up and we talked for an hour. It was really great to have the back and forth. I know that some of you guys have complained that that's not a convenient time for you, so especially in India, so we might do another live stream during the week. Let me let me know if that's something you'd be interested in to do it earlier in the day, maybe like on a on a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that when we can find a bit of time in the schedule. And if you don't want to miss the live stream and you don't want to schedule it in, just make sure you click on the bell next to the subscribe button and you won't miss anything. And, you know, thanks everyone for subscribing and liking and commenting. The other day we reached 9,000 subscribers, which was the next milestone, which thank you so much for everyone who's, who's recently joined us. So today I want to talk about app developers versus game developers, because a lot of the times as mobile application developers, the two uh, disciplines get, get lumped together. So. And they're completely different. It's like two different mentalities. So I've done a little bit of game development and I'm talking about simple 2D game development, but most of the time I consider myself to be an app developer. So I think in terms of buttons and lists and drop downs and all that kind of stuff. Whereas a game developer thinks in terms of the game loop, uh, the scoring, the levels, um, you know, how the different objects interact with each other on each iteration of the, of the frame reset and everything like that, completely different, right? So if you're like thinking about hiring a developer, that's something to keep in mind that you get the right developer for the job because I have hired the wrong developer before for both those situations where I had my so I had a development team in India and they had done a couple of the business apps that we started off with and then was, I wanted to do a game so I said can we do a game and of course they said yeah we could do a game and it was disastrous right they were just they were trying to do everything in native right so they didn't have any concept of of game loops or or anything like that. If they can move something across the screen, it was like, it was amazing, right? We weren't using Corona or any of the game frameworks at the time, right? And it just took a long time. And they didn't know, and even I was, I was doing research on my own, and I was like finding out stuff that they, were, they weren't even thinking to look for, like, you know, using tiling engine as opposed to drawing everything on the screen uh, manually in code, so like you could create new levels and everything like that. And, and this is just simple 2D games. I mean, when it comes to 3D games, it's completely different, and it's a completely different mindset. So, and I've also had the person, so once we did start doing games, we started doing them in Corona, and then we had like a client project come in for another business app, which most of the client stuff we do are business apps. Well, you know, I've had a couple of game applications uh, for client work, but I prefer to do business apps. It's easier to describe. I think a lot of times I think game development is, is, is more suited to the indie developer who could sit there and just iterate. It's like, like writing a novel. You know, they could just, they could take the story where they want it to go as opposed to describing everything in detail beforehand, which a lot of, especially a lot of clients don't, don't really like to do. So I had my, my game developer design a business application using Corona SDK because according to their documentation, you could do business apps with it. And I thought that's fantastic. And that went a bit awry too. Like everything was in, all the variables were in global scope. You know, uh, it just, it, it was done in, it, it, basically what we had to do, we had like weeks of work on this where it was just full of, full of bugs. And I just, I pulled an all-nighter and rewrote the thing uh, almost completely in Ionic and, uh, and it worked much better, right? So there's two different mentalities and this is something to always be thinking about, right? If you're going to hire an app developer, think about what you need. And this is the first question we ask new clients. Do you need an app or a game? So my question to you guys today is, what kind of developer are you? I'm definitely totally more of an app developer. Like for years, that's, you know, mostly what I've done, you know. I think in terms of APIs and databases and, and form elements and, and doing game stuff is, while it's, you know, I think it's, it's a bit more fun, it's also, it's something that I think it's more of a personal thing, doing it for yourself. That's why I think in terms of indie developers, in terms of games, I think you guys are better off that way. Just my personal opinion, but, but uh, I don't know. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Are you an app developer or a game developer? And uh, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.